Isaac Newton, the guy who discovered the laws of gravity, had some serious beef with a scientist called Robert Hooke. Now Robert Hooke was an incredibly ugly scientist who was really insecure about how smart Newton was and he tried to sabotage his groundbreaking book on the laws of gravity. He failed to do this and the book got published despite Hooke's efforts to try and sabotage and take credit for Newton's work. But Newton never forgave him. After Hooke died, Newton became president of the Royal Society and he held such a grudge that when he did, he destroyed Hooke's official portrait and erased his face from him. History, one final and ultimate act of revenge. So I've been telling some version of this story for the last five years to the students that I teach. I think it's a nice, interesting, if you pardon the pun, hook. When you're introducing the concept of springs and how they stretch when you've got to introduce Hook's law. I got this story from the TV show Cosmos and it's fair to say that he was villainized in this TV show. Roll the clip! That law is mine, I tell you. I proved it first. Put up or shut up, Mr. Hook. I'll make him pay. I'll wager a book worth 40 shillings to the man who can solve it. That book is mine, Mr. N. I've already done the calculations. Alan. Robert Hooke had died years before, having ruined his health with some bad habits. Daily doses of wormwood, opium, mercury. A few months later, Newton was elected to replace him as president of the Royal Society. It is said that a portrait of Hooke once hung on these walls. Some believe that it was on a night like this that Isaac Newton finally took his revenge against Robert Hooke. But there's a problem, it's not 100% true. So it's not 100% guaranteed that Hook and his portrait was erased specifically by Newton. Now it's true that there was a lot of beef between the two. It started off with their disagreement on light and then it uh, boiled over as portrayed in the TV show Cosmos with Hook trying to claim credit on Newton's laws of gravity. I don't think it's fair that uh, Hook has been historically villainized for his disagreements with Newton. But one of the creative choices that I don't like is how they vilified Hook, seemingly for being a hunched back character. Now, it is accurate that Hook had a crooked back. Two of his contemporaries described him as such. However, you can point out that the way they've portrayed him in this TV show is specifically um, prejudice against his disability. They're portraying him like some sort of goblin. He's got this massively caricatured hunched back. He's got the sort of like weird, creepy golem hair on his head. He speaks like a goblin. I think it's more accurate to say that Robert Hooke had a hunched back, but other than that, he was a perfectly normal person physically. Now, frustratingly enough, I've deleted about eight gigabytes worth of footage on my original uh, video about Hook. I had about 30 minutes worth of um, content uh, that I have now deleted uh, because I wanted to make a um, simple story, another simple story. So I've been telling a simple story about Robert Hook to my students, portraying him as a villain. And I started to learn a little bit about him. Um, I felt uh, like I had unjustly represented the man. And there was a part that really resonated with me personally about the fact that this character had been deliberately erased from history. There's a part of me that felt a real sense of injustice about that and a real sort of existential dread that I feel about um, being remembered. The idea that this one character from history hasn't been remembered, that horrified me, that, that scared me. And I wanted to uh, make a video on my channel about how uh, Robert Hooke has been unjustly vilified I wanted to say, actually, he was a really interesting character. We owe him an apology. Now, there's something that really struck a nerve with me um, in learning about Hook. And one of the things uh, uh, in his personal life that he did was he had um, relationships with um, maids and housekeepers, um, something that sort of gives the ick. However, the biggest uh, thing uh, that really put me off him as a character is learning about his relationship with uh, his niece. At the age of 10, Robert Hook's niece, Grace Hook, was put into Robert Hooke's care because he, Robert Hooke's brother, he was in financial troubles, he was in debt, 
and uh, his dad decided to send his daughter Grace into the care of Robert. Now, through the passage of time, it's impossible to know why Hook's brother sent uh, Grace into the care of Robert Hook. Was it uh, just purely a financial choice, so he didn't have to look after her, he didn't need to have the expenses, or was there something more malicious? Because Robert Hook wrote in his own diary at the age of 16 that he started to have a sexual relationship with Grace Hook. Bearing in mind, she has been in his care from the age of 10. That's grooming! And it's actually worth pointing out that even at the time, um, you, there are some people who would say, oh, you know, back then, 400 years ago, so Robert Hooke was around in the 1600s, uh, that sort of age difference um, between a much older man and a young teenage girl was normal. Um, it wasn't normal, so he, she was his niece. That's not normal. It's not normal now, and it wasn't normal then. And it essentially, so this story about Grace Hook really threw my simple narrative about Robert Hooke out the window, because there's no way to remember him other than a villain. Now, what I think we can point out and maybe a broader point to, to bring up with the TV show Cosmos. How they chose to vilify him was they chose to um, portray Robert Hook as almost like a Disney character villain. In reality, villains don't look villainous. Villains can be charming, villains can be charismatic. They even mention in the TV show that people wanted to meet up with Robert Hooke. They say that it's because of his big brains, but chances are it was also just because he was probably a charming guy. However, how he chose to act behind closed doors is what's really important. In his diary, he noted every single time he had sexual relations with Grace Hooke. He'd draw the Pisces sign, uh, the 12th um, constellation in the Zodiac, which has connections with Aphrodite, with the goddess of love. Pretty freaking gross. It sort of paints a picture of a sort of weird uh, sex-obsessed creep, to be honest with you. And it brings up the question, how should we remember historical figures? Now, a lot of people would argue, yes, this sort of person was a horrible person, but that's people were like that back then. However, what I struggle with is the idea of just sort of ignoring it. But if we choose to ignore certain things from historical figures, that's a reflection on us. Am I happy to ignore the fact that Robert Hooke was at the least a groomer, at the worst uh, a paedophile? I'm not happy to accept that. I'm not going to remember the man in a positive way. We can celebrate the discoveries. So the fact that he invented the compound microscope. That was an amazing invention. The invention was amazing. He coined the term cell. That word cell, yeah, brilliant. He did all of these drawings. The drawings are great. The discourse around artists, can you separate the art from the artists? I think it's important to bring that discussion to the world of science. Can we separate the science from the scientist? I think we have to. The reason why I originally felt a connection with Hook was the idea that he had been unjustly erased from history. But then part of me thought about Grace Hook. Here's a character who has only been um, remembered historically in the context of her relationship with a man who'd groomed her. Who was she? What did she look like? What did she think? What was her personality like? Was she funny? Did she enjoy science? I don't know, and we will never know. She's been erased, and in a way that's infinitely more tragic than a scientist who has no surviving portrait. We know about Hook, we know who he was, we just don't know 100% what he looked like. But what I want to do is take a moment to remember Grace Hook, to think about who she could have been, who she was, and the fact that she was locked out of science her whole life. It would have been impossible for her at the time to get a secondary school education. It would only be possible for her over 200 years after her death for her to attend Oxford University, the same university that Robert Hooke went to. That's crazy. That's nuts. So when thinking about historical injustices towards the likes of Robert Hooke, I think it's important to save our compassion to those who deserve it. I think it's more important to give our compassion to women who may have been great scientists but weren't able to. I've really struggled making this video. I've spent what's felt like an absolute age on this video, um, but I've, I've really struggled with the point. Um, I started off uh, literally making a whole video about how brilliant Hook was, 
discovering this and then trying to come to, to, to terms with how Robert Hooke's character, how that will affect how I choose to remember him. And in a way, how I choose to remember him is, is, is just up to me. How are you going to choose to remember him? What, what do you think about this, this character? What do you think? Did you know about Robert Hooke? Did you know about his scientific discoveries? Did you know about his foibles? I, I think that's the word for it. Did you know about his awful things they did? Now, there's an artist who's chosen to um, draw uh, paintings of Robert Hooke in order to memorialize him, as it were. Now, I'm gonna dedicate the last part of my video um, doing the same thing, but with Grace Hook. Now, there's no written account of what she looked like, but I'm gonna do my best. So this last bit of the video is dedicated to Grace Hook.